Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to the show. It's Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday, December the 13th, 2011. And I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Rachel Shu. Nice to see you. Yep, good to be here. Yeah. I'll warn you all, though, I've had a bug this week, so if I start coughing or hacking or keel over, <laughs> that explains. If that happens, don't worry, I'll turn off your mic. Yes. All right, so coming up in the newsroom, the cloud is an unstoppable genie. And a study has found Chrome to provide the best online protection versus Internet Explorer and Firefox. Um, a German court has ruled in favor of Motorola against Apple. Will iPhones be available this Christmas? And the people who make XP antivirus are paying out $8 million. Ooh. So stick around. These stories are coming up later in the show. Awesome. We've also got a brand new photo gallery on our website, category5.tv. Do check it out. Over on the left-hand side, click on Photo Gallery. You're going to see all the thumbnails uh, for the last several photos that, uh, that have been taken. I'll give you a quick glimpse at that. Very cool stuff. So check it out. And there is a light box effect if, uh, if your browser supports it as well. Nice to have a, a full-fledged gallery on our website. We'll be adding photos to that on a regular basis. It goes all the way back to Season 1. Uh, so you can catch photos from Seasons 1, 2, 3, 4, and now uh, here we are in Season 5. Also, mobile.cat5.tv is the place to go if you're using a mo <laughs> mobile <laughs> mobile device. Pardon me, uh, and uh, you'll be able to head on over there if you've got an iPhone or an iPod Touch. Uh, you'll be able to actually catch the show live. But no matter what device you're using, I, I actually heard that uh, some people have gotten it to work on the, the uh, Android platform as well. So keep that in mind. Do check it out, um, and we'll continue to test as you let us know uh, what platforms it's working on. But mobile.cat5.tv, uh, great website if you're using a mobile device. Tonight we're going to be looking at how to make our internet faster, which is uh, really cool because uh, typically you've got to you know, invest dollars in bandwidth and things like that. But there are a couple of tricks to getting your internet to operate a little bit faster, uh, and we're going to be giving you one of those tonight. It's uh, free of charge, and uh, we're going to walk you through step by step. So stick around. Uh, we're going to show you how to get faster internet on the cheap, a.k.a. free. Also, in addition uh, to our photo gallery, great new uh, feature this week is live.cat5.tv. Live.cat5.tv is a brand new uh, landing page for you. What, what tends to happen on a Tuesday night, uh, it gets really, really busy here at the, at the studio. Our website gets just bombarded with a whole lot of traffic on a Tuesday night. You see it's like a, a mountain every Tuesday when we look at the analytics. Um, but uh, essentially what, what can happen is people start to have trouble getting onto the website if there's too many people making requests all at once because it's a one-hour window for you to get onto the show. So we created live.cat5.tv just for you. Uh, about a half hour to 15 minutes before the show goes live, you'll actually get a little countdown right there and you'll be able to catch the show live, interact with the chat room, interact with... or uh, get access to backstage pass as well um, so very handy site for you and i see that uh, there are some people actually using that tonight very cool so uh, some people are wondering if uh you're using a green screen but really his heater just broke so yeah, it's, it's no one inside now we're actually broadcasting tonight directly from the north pole which is really cool <laughs> um and uh, as a matter of fact i i was chatting with somebody that i ran into up here um, just this afternoon, and he had a message for you, a viewer uh, from the North Pole. Let's uh, let's see what he has to say. Ah, you're here, my dear Rachel. Oh, oh, oh. I'm so happy to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. My, you've gotten old. Come with me. I have something very special to show you. This is where I keep a card of all the big kids in the world, including yours. Hmm. Now, where did I put it? Aha. <laughs> oh. 
Could this be your card? <laughs> Excellent. You must be wondering what I'm going to do with your card. First of all, I'll need this. Ta-da! Watch closely what happens when I place it right here. Stay watching. Oh, I see that you're now a young woman. Now, I have a very important question. My dear Rachel, have you been good this year? Now, let's go see what my magic machine says. Hmm, you haven't been all that good, have you? I see that you've been very mischievous to your boss and your grandfather. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> well, and look at what you've accomplished this year. I see that you no longer fart in public. <laughs> that's wonderful. I'm very that's proud true. of you. <laughs> I'd like to give you a challenge for the upcoming year. I would like you to learn to use a computer. I'm sure you can do it. <laughs> you can do anything you put your mind to. My dear Rachel. <laughs> oh, and don't forget to leave me some cookies and milk on Christmas Eve. Ho, 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 A very, very special message. <laughs> Specifically... Oh, boy. Sent out to you from our friend from the North Pole. <laughs> oh, you no longer fart in public. <laughs> I could what was that about? She's like trying to hold back the laughs. <laughs> I Check will not out. laugh. I know. That I know. will not happen again. MagicSanta.ca. Check it out. You can send those to your coworkers. Uh, it's all automated. It uses Flash. You can just fill in the blanks, and you'll be able to send one of those to your coworkers, your friends, your family. Uh, get a good laugh for uh, for the adults, but also uh, a fun a fun thing to send your kids as well. Uh, lots and lots of fun and pretty neat. But uh, MagicSanta.ca. Check that out. Yeah. All right. Are you surprised? Are you surprised? Santa paid you a visit. I feel so special now. Mm -hmm. So special. Okay, we're going to be right back after this, uh, and uh, we're going to have your questions. So uh, email us live at category5.tv tonight, uh, or get into our chat room. It's Category 5 on Freenode, and we'll be right back. Whether hitting the road or the dusty trails, Liquid Image Canada captures the action with a true point-of-view HD video camera built directly into a high-quality MX goggle. It records every bit of the excitement exactly how you see it. If high octane isn't your thing, take a relaxing underwater adventure and capture it forever in high definition video with a high quality underwater camera mask from Liquid Image Canada. Perfect for the enthusiast snorkeler or the deep sea diver. Check out the entire line of camera masks for every sport. LiquidImageCanada.com this is Category 5 Technology TV, and we're online, www.category5.tv. So, uh, Lunatic Head says, hi, Robbie, greetings hey. from India. Watching from India, live in the chat room tonight. Mm -hmm. Nice to have you here. Is uh, anybody brand new here as well, or uh, want to say hello? Nice to see you joining us in the chat room. And, of course, uh, just a reminder, if you're just joining us, live.cat5.tv is a brand new site. Uh, this can allow you to watch the show in your browser as well as uh, interact with the chat room and participate, uh, watch the backstage pass, which is our behind-the-scenes camera. Maxwell6307 is joining us, uh, I believe, for the first time tonight, but definitely is new. Uh, would love to uh, hear where you're from. Let us know. Uh, has been catching up on some of the back episodes on the website. Very cool. Uh, Lunatic Head has been enjoying uh, the chat room throughout the week. Nice to see some of our uh, our friends and viewers who uh, who lurk in the chat room and hang out and have a good time. And uh, very helpful. Uh, people like Gad, uh, Gadwill or Garby uh, is is there a lot. Yep. Nice to see you. Yeah. All righty. Maxwell so. sixty three zero seven. Sorry, is is from Coburg, Ontario. Nice to see you. I've lived in Ontario all this time, and I don't know where Coburg is. Where's Coburg? North, south, middle. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of at the bottom near this blue thing. <laughs> near this. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Right on Lake Ontario. Just past Belleville. 
So we are way west of. Uh, no, we're north. Where are we? You're right. No, we're there. Sort, of, sort of south. Uh, oh, just right west. Yeah, I was right the first time. There we are. Yep. We're over uh, broadcasting from Barrie tonight. Literally. I mean, it looks like the North Pole. I know. All righty. Well, we have some viewer questions. Awesome. Um, here's one from Robert Gorsinski. Hey, Robert. Um, hi, Robbie. I would like to say thank you for helping me with my question regarding IP cameras on episode 219. I've managed yeah. to get the cameras working using Dindins. Uh, Din DNS, probably? <laughs> Din DNS, yeah. Dindins. In regards to my second <laughs> question regarding redirecting files from NAS to a text file, I access the NAS through Samba. For example, I go to the Places menu, then select Connect to Server, then enter the IP address, which is displayed on the Ready NAS display, and change the server type to Windows Share. I can then access my files from the NAS. What I want to do is be able to get a list of the movies, DVD, HD, DVD, Blu-rays, right. that I have on the okay. NAS onto a text file that I can then store on my mobile phone. As I have around 300 movies, I want to be able to check a list to see what I have when I go shopping for movies. Thank you. Um, that's Robert Melbourne, Australia. Okay. So Very 300 cool. movies. Wow. <laughs> All 100% legitimate. I understand. Um, okay, so basically, what what he's trying to do is he's got an, a NAS de a device, the box, a NAS box device that uh, allow NAS's network attached storage. So it's like a hard drive that you can access from any computer within your network. Usually, is is the way it works. Um, so with that, you're able to save files in a hopefully a safer location because usually these devices have like a raid one or something along those lines it's a good idea to uh, to have such a device but the situation here is you're using linux and you're not sure how to mount that samba share in such a way that you can get access to those files so what uh, what is actually being done i'm going to bring up my computer screen here you're going places uh, connect to server and we're switching over to Windows Share, which is Samba, or SMB. And we're entering our server IP or qualified name, the share name, right? And then connecting using a username and password if you need to. So then I've got access to the files in that folder, right? There we have it. So the problem with that is, of course, if you hit Control-L, you'll see that you're connected through SMB colon slash slash right but that's not a valid protocol for for use for running like an ls command or you know something along those lines so what i'm going to do i'm going to do things a little bit differently using a tool called smbfs samba file system i'm going to jump into terminal here for you okay first thing we want to do is sudo apt get install smbfs enter your password okay um, it may ask you if you need to continue, otherwise it's just going to go ahead. If it's already installed, it'll just tell you that you've got the current version, no problem. Okay, so that's done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mount point. So let's say I go CD and then a tilde, which is going to take me to my home folder. Let's say we want to do that. I'm going to make a directory, uh, and we're going to call this um, NAS. Okay? Enter. So now I've got a directory called NAS. It's empty. So what we want to do is we want to mount our Samba share to that. So we go sudo mount, and then we're going to specify um, the server. So it's slash slash, in my case, it's 10.0.0.5. Yours will be whatever your IP or uh, name, uh, host name of your server is. Slash, I'm using temp as an example. So that's the Samba share. It's the IP address slash the share name. Uh, so whatever you shared it as pictures or NAS or whatever you've called it. Um, okay, so then I'm going to put that on NAS. That's the folder I created. It's empty, so I can turn it into a mount point. I'm going to hit enter. Ask me for my super user password, because notice I had to use sudo. That gives me access to mounting things. Now I'm going to type that same command, ls NAS, and you'll see that I've actually got all the files that I saw when I when I brought up my places and that connect to server. Same files. So now to redirect that information into a file, of course I can go ls nas 
whatever it could be called movies dot text right txt hit enter now i've got that file so gedit movies dot txt notice i just piped just like the dos pipe all right so there it is in gedit okay if you've got some subfolders on it though what may happen let's bring it back up here I'm going to create a subfolder. I'm going to move a couple of these files into that subfolder. There we go. So now things look a little bit different when I run that ls, nas. See this? So it actually creates a header called subfolder and then shows me the list of files that are under that. So that may not be ideal for your situation if you have things sorted into folders. So in this case, you might try, uh, well, you could do ls nas dash r uh, dash all pardon me let's move nas to the end of the command okay ls dash r with a capital r dash all with lowercase all and nas that gives us a bit of a different output that shows us the folder the file sizes um, the ownership the dates everything basically okay what you may be looking for though is to use the find command find nas and you'll see that what that does now is it creates a list with the directory names see so there's the directory nas slash subfolder nas slash subfolder those files right so now I can go find nas and then pipe it through with a single pipe to my list.txt gedit list.txt and now it looks like that nice and organized, probably exactly what you're looking for there. Beyond that, um, the only other thing to understand about piping is, for example, I can go with my, if I wanted to do another folder, I could pipe a double pipe. And what that's going to do is it's going to append. A single pipe is going to actually replace. So if list.txt already exists, this is destructive. There's not going to be any prompts. So if I hit enter, it just does it just does it just does it on the other hand if I do double pipe that's going to append so if I do that one two three four five six seven times and then G edit my file you'll see that it's actually in there seven times okay so that's really all you need to know I think that's right. uh, I think that probably answers your question but uh, now keep in mind if you have a password for your Samba share on your NAS box, you're going to need to enter your password when you do that mount command. Um, so things are a little bit different. Um, we can get into that. Probably, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we've got an article in the wiki. I'm sure just to say that, Garby's already uh, over on the wiki checking to see if we have one and post a link for you in the, ch in the uh, chat logs. Um, there you have it. Um, actually, Dave Maydu is saying, which media software is better, Movita or XBMC? Well, that's a tough one. I think it's a different thing, right? XBMC is kind of designed in my view of it, and I'm not, I, I, I tend to use Totem. But uh, these are media center pieces of software, so you can watch basically internet TV on your computer screen, uh, or on your TV with a connected computer. So XBMC is more designed for a computer scenario, or uh, pardon me, a TV scenario. Whereas Movida, which used to be Elisa or Lisa or something like that, um, it was always good on the computer, but then they try, they're try they migrating over, and I haven't used it, honestly, since they, since they changed, because uh, I didn't like the interface. But, so, hard to say, but that would be a poll for the, you know, ask, ask the question in, the, in their forums. All righty. Then you'll get the, the very biased review. I don't know how to answer that. What features are you looking for? That'd be uh, that'd be probably a better way to approach it. Would be say, you know, are you connecting it to your TV or are you using it on your computer screen? If it's on your computer screen, I would include Miro Internet TV on in that mix, um, and even on the TV. If it's strictly just to be able to watch your movies from your NAS, then uh, XBMC is probably the most streamlined of the uh, of the uh, kind of. Uh, you know, your HD kind of connective viewing experiences. Okay. 32 inch LCD. Try them both. I mean, they're both Linux based, right? 
So install XBMC and install uh, Movita. Give it a try. Alrighty. Well, we have a question here from Leland, who I don't see him in the uh, chat room. Hey, Leland. I'm not sure if he's here, but um, he says, Robbie or Eric, he doesn't ask me because he knows I won't be able to answer anything (laughs) computer-related. Could you explain to use the importance of the flash read speed of a video memory card SD, etc.? So secure digital is SD. Um, The media speed. Um, If you bought like an SD card for your camera where it has like the class of the card has to do with the speed how that relates to you let's consider we're using a, a HD camcorder right pardon me let's uh, let's bring up the uh, the wonderful Wikipedia um, okay HD bitrate let's try that bitrate first one that comes up for Wikipedia Audio, video, here we go. Okay, check this out. AVC HD is the first thing that stands out to me because most HD camcorders support that. AVC HD is a compression codec that uh, utilizes MPEG-4. Um, it makes the files smaller for your camera. So that's why you're able to get a camcorder that has 8 gigs of memory and yet you can somehow record 2 hours of video on that. It's uh, it's amazing compared to yesterday's standards. So looking at that, AVC HD is a common standard. Also there's HDV 1080i, which is uh, if I would say, you know, that's it's not as standard as AVC HD as far as consumer cameras go. It's leaning more towards the high-end camera. So either way for HD video on a camcorder, you're looking at 24 to 25 megabits per second. Okay, so your cards are classed. Your SD card is classed from uh, level one, class one, to class ten, and that number specifically represents how many megabytes per second that card is. So if we go back, uh, let's bring up Google for example, just a real quick way to do it. So we know that we need 25 megabits, megabits in megabytes, okay? So that is 3.125 megabytes per second, okay? So the 25 megabits that we're being told by Wikipedia our HD video camera is going to require is the equivalent of 3.125 megabytes per second. So that means a class four card will successfully be able to uh, record on that camera. if you go any lower than that, you're going to get granularity on the on the image. It's going it's going to work, but it, it's going to have to compensate by dropping frames. You're not going to be able to record in in full motion. Certainly not 60 frames a second. So, um, so similarly, you might go to six mega uh, megabytes a second card, like class six, gives you a little bit more room uh, for play. If you're using a still camera then it may speed up the uh, the time that it takes between shots. Uh, if you've got a high megapixel camera, you take a picture, it's several megs, right? Uh, so, you, I don't know, you take a, a high-res picture, what are they, like three or four megs for a, a photo, a JPEG? So you, you consider, if your card is a class three, that photo's gonna take a whole second to, to save, right? Because it's megabytes per second, right? So if you've got a class six, it's going to save in a half a second. If you've got a class ten, what are you thinking it's about? It's going to take a whole I know. second. Well, it doesn't save. sound like a lot, but your kid is up to second. bat. Your kid is up to bat. You've got those, you know, those, those milliseconds for that swing, right? And it's like snap, wait, wait, snap, wait. You just don't want that, right? So you get a, a, a class eight or a class ten card, and you're going to be able to snap pictures like that you see class one to class four cards for dirt dirt cheap uh, at the store checkout aisles but you gotta know that it's not the same thing it's you're looking at one to four megabytes a second sure it may suffice it may work but it's going to be really slow which for your camera means it's going to take time to take each picture for your digital video camera it's going to degrade the quality if it doesn't uh, meet the minimum of your camera cool I hope that effectively answers your question. How's your week going? Oh, it hasn't been too bad. Yeah? You're saying you're sick? Yeah. 
So far, I haven't been She's coughing like, so at all. Numb. But I can't get her to laugh tonight. I mean, I try. Well, because I'm, I'm afraid. Try. I'm afraid if I uh, start laughing, the cough will get going, and then I'll just be oh, all, all over the place. <laughs> be like. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm trying. Well, you don't want me to have a coughing fit. That wouldn't be nice. No. Laughing fit, yes. Coughing fit, not so much. Hey, I got a tree growing out of my head. It's kind of cool. All righty. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can take it away with the news if you like. If I like. We're, all righty. Uh, all right. Jump out to uh, to the cloud. Yeah, of course. Ooh, I should be, like, wearing a cape or something. <laughs> like Superman. All right. Put my glasses on. So, the... <laughs> what? <laughs> <sighs> the U.S. Israeli startup CloudShare, whose technology enables web-based development and testing of software applications... Expects to as much as triple sales in 2012 as it benefits from rapidly growing cloud computing market. Its top seven or eight customers, all large, well-known software firms, pay 400,000 to 800,000 a year to CloudShare. Clients include SAP. Is that is it SAP or SAP? Adobe, HP, Dell, and Cisco. I'm not sure on that one. Uh, CEO Gurry Stark told Routers today that acquisitions in the cloud sector are happening almost weekly. It just shows how important the cloud has become. He said the cloud is irreversible. The genie is out of the bottle. You did it. Trying to trip me up with clouds is the first topic. <laughs> All right. So a UK study which compares the safety features offered in Chrome, Internet Explorer, and Firefox on the Windows platform has found that Google Chrome offers the most protection against online attacks than any other mainstream browsers. Um, the 102 page, the 102 page report prepared by researchers from security firm Acuvent started with the premise that buffer overflow bugs and other security vulnerabilities were inevitable in any complex piece of software. Rather than relying on metrics such as the number of flaws fixed or the amount of time it took to release updates, the authors examined the practical effect protections included by default in each browser had on a wide class of exploits. Chris Velasek, who is the senior research scientist for the study, said that they found that Google Chrome did the most sandboxing. So I'm assuming we all know what sandboxing is. It's other like than a me. test environment. It's a safe environment for surfing, so that as soon as you're done your session, it basically clears the sand. You can build your sand castle, which is to surf the web, do your thing, and then rake it, and everything that you've done is gone in such a way that if you got a virus, it's considered you know it's it's contained to that session. So you close the session, and it's gone. It deletes the sand. Yeah. It deletes the sand. It's I like a see. cloud that comes in with a bunch of wind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I suppose I could use that. My computer is crawling because I'm sure it's loaded with viruses right now. How you heard that? I under uh, don't put sand in your computer. <laughs> just, just being sure that you didn't misinterpret that. Just, just pour it out of sand all over. <laughs> Why is it working now? <laughs> bag What's of twenty-five on? kilogram bag of sand. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So surprisingly, Firefox plays third. And Rob, yes, tr Rob B, trying to trip me up, said, uh, "What's that up in the sky? It's a pig in the clouds." I can't believe the Firefox plays so poorly, <laughs> but this is on Windows platform as well. So, alrighty, um, the report was commissioned by Google, but the authors insist that they had complete autonomy in deciding what metrics to use and what conclusions they made. So. A German court has ruled in Motorola Mobility's favor in a patents dispute with Apple. The Android smartphone maker had complained that Apple failed to license one of its wireless intellectual properties. Um, Apple uses the technology in its iPhones and its 3G iPads. Motorola could now try to force Apple to remove the feature from its devices or halt sales in Germany. However, Apple said it intended to appeal and they stressed that users should have no trouble finding iPhones or iPads this Christmas. And um, so more than 300,000 consumers taken in by a scam that warned them they needed to purchase software to get rid of non-existent security threats 
are in line to get a slice of up to $8 million seized from fake antivirus peddler Innovative Marketing. The firm agreed to surrender the ill-gotten gains to settle Federal Trade Commission charges that they use deceptive ads to trick people into buying software packages such as WinFixer, Drive Cleaner, and XP Antivirus. So if you want the full stories, you can go to category5.tv slash newsroom. And the Category 5 TV newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash and Simple 10 with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story that you think is worthy of on-air mention, email the newsroom at Category 5 TV. For the Category 5 TV newsroom, I'm Rachel Hsu. Thank you, Rachel. Tonight's episode of Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you by GardengateFarms.com. For certified organic broccoli sprout and wheatgrass juice, visit them at GardengateFarms.com. Also, Planet Calypso. Download the free online massive multiplayer online game. Cat5.tv slash Calypso to get your hands on that. And also, the Pogo Plug device. Cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug. Now offering a free cloud-based solution. You can visit Cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug for more information. This is Category 5 Technology TV, uh, and uh, you will find our website at Category5.tv. Oh, and there we go. So, I have to ask, yeah. the Pogo Plug is a USB storage, is the it? The Pogo Plug is a device to connect your USB storage to, and it connects to your internet connection, mm -hmm. so you can access that storage from anywhere, from any device, securely, encrypted. All right. Does that make sense? Like, for me, on a mobile device, I can access all my files. I can do backups remotely. Let's say you put one at, uh, at a family member's house. You could do a backup to your Pogo plug, which is going to your external USB device, hard drive, and it's off-site. So if you ever had an, a flood or a fire or something to take out your computer, it doesn't matter because your files are off-site, and it's like a, an amazing solution, and there's no monthly service fees or anything like that. It's just mm -hmm. the hardware solution is the, the greatest solution. Um, it gives you access to a physical drive. You know where your data is because it's actually on your hard drive. Brilliant. Cool. Yeah, I remember back in the days in college of the original USB things. They were the new, yeah. the new craze. I had to pay over a hundred bucks for one gig. This one, one here. One gig. Like it's worn right off. This is my first USB flash drive. This is sixty-four megs, mm -hmm. and I'll guarantee you, I paid over a hundred dollars for that. What? And it still works. <laughs> I plugged this into my brother multifunction center printer um, the other day, and it's so amazing. I, I it comes up on the screen, and you can scan one page after a time directly to your USB device. Uh, this was cool. So I was backing up uh, my daughter's school photos and dance recital photos and things like that. So I plugged this in. It immediately prompts me, prompts me what I want to do. This is the Brother Multifunction Center. And I put the first uh, picture in, hit scan, put the next picture in, hit scan, and it saves them on here. Then plug it into my Pogo Plug right on the front port of the Pogo Plug Pro. And it synchronizes with uh, ActiveSync to my off-site Pogo Plug. So I've got a backup of it immediately. It's amazing. Cool. Yep. I don't um, know what you're laughing about. No, because uh, one, uh, I forget who said it, but <laughs> he said you need to turn down the Star of Bethlehem over your head. And I was just like, there's a star over his head, and I actually looked. I actually <laughs> she looked. I was looking Where's above the my star? head. It's that little glow yeah. up there. Yeah. Um, also, I think it was, uh, let's see, who said it? Someone said the Pogo Plug. Oh, good guy says, Robbie F., I tried the Pogo Plug software and it wasn't working on my PC All right. Windows. On Windows. The Pogo Plug software is another solution from, from Pogo Plug that allows you to share the files that are on your computer. Should work if you've got Windows, but if you don't have, uh, if it's not working for some reason, um, I, would, I would contact them. They're very good to get back to you, uh, their support department. But uh, it gives you access to your computer's files all the time. But here's the disadvantage. Your computer's got to be on, right? That's a power-hungry beast. And uh, 
It's going to de decrease the lifespan of your hardware. That's where the Pogo Plug device comes in real nice because you can plug in a USB drive, even a flash drive. They're so cheap these days. You can get, like we're saying, like a, a multi-gig stick for very cheap. You can plug that in, and then you've got no moving parts on the entire device, and you've got access to the files from anywhere. Um, and it's very, very low power consumption. You think about an external laptop computer hard drive, like the little one, you know, 500 gigs, say, plug that in, and it's very little power consumption because they're designed to conserve battery life in a laptop, and you can access it from anywhere, and it uses very little power, and you don't have to have your computer on. So that's the difference there. But uh, contact Pogoplug if you're having trouble with, your, with their software there, and uh, I'm sure they'll be very helpful to, to get you set up or send us a, a direct you know, information about the problem itself. If you want to email us, I'll maybe con connect with them and see what they say. Live at Category5.tv if you'd like to email us. Speaking of email, i got an interesting one today. Um, just as a side note, not tech-related, but um, something that has been uh, affecting a lot of people in our area, and, and I'm certainly elsewhere in the world, but it's Christmas shopping time, so everybody's doing a lot of shopping. And when you go to the store, you're not necessarily watching the screen the whole time you got the kids pulling on you and you got you're trying to hide the stuff and and it's like it's difficult to keep an eye on things and it's actually been happening it's very dishonest but it has been happening where um, people are checking out they're paying and they're walking away sometimes without even a receipt but uh, people have been going home check their receipt and they see that there was twenty or forty dollars cash back on the purchase they never asked for that cash back so the cashier or somebody has been actually punching in a twenty dollar cash back, knowing that oh they're they're not going to notice, and pocketing the twenty dollar bill. No, but you got to sign those things because otherwise you can bring your receipt back. Done. I, that's my theory. He knows this because he's tried it. No, goodness, that's dishonest. But I would expect that they they probably you know did you mark the receipt so that they can there's. It's, it can be done, right? I would expect. You think you'd notice, though, like, <coughs> you buy a few items, it's like 40 bucks. Oh, that'll be $100, please. Well, but you don't, though. If you're standing in a superstore and you're doing Christmas shopping, for example, and you're, you're buying for the kids and stuff, you're probably not going to notice $20 right there at the till. I worked at a so, store once, and uh, I was sh short giving the lady 70 cents. And she was so furious... She's like, you're trying to rob me, and you're stealing 70 cents, I bet, from everyone that comes through here. And then she's wow. like, she said she was calling the cops, and she stormed out of the building. She's like, I'm going to have you arrested for stealing my 70 cents. I'm like, you can have it. I miscounted. <sighs> Customer service. Random. Random. Uh, so I, I don't know if that's legit because it, it's an email forward and lots of people were on a CC and so I encourage users when you're forwarding things, of course, use blind carbon copy BCC. It's going to protect your your friends and your family from receiving uh, further email because that gets forwarded down the line and everybody's email address is on that. So all of a sudden, uh, one of those people has a virus and guess what? Every single person in that email is going to be on that virus list, so it's a problem. Uh, but that said, I don't know if the email was legit, so I'm not forwarding it to you. I'm just sharing the information that was in the email. It sounds like it could be legitimate, and it was a local email, so what? I'm not sure if it's legit, so I'm not going to well, forward it to you, but I'm going to tell you all well, I'm not right forward here. It. No, for sure, but I'll tell, I'll tell you. I'm sure it be, is legit. Just be cautious. It's like when I go to an ATM these days. Like for the past several years, I always feel the card slot to make sure that there's not a, a, an insert reader in that card slot. Because if you put in your card and there's a reader and it's transmitting your card information and they're monitoring your pin as you punch it in, they've got access, they can spoof your card, right? So, similarly, I'll just tell you, you know, check your receipt on your way out, uh, watch the till, watch the cashier, and double check that they haven't marked you down for cash advance if you didn't request it. So, just a little food for thought. Thank you for the email, Jim. Uh, I think that's uh, good information for sure. Okay. So we're talking about getting your internet connection to be faster. And one of the ways that we can do that is through modifying our DNS, using a DNS server that is going to perform much faster for us. So DNS is the domain name system. It's basically you know, the internet uses IP addresses. Like when I was connecting to my server there, 10.0.0.5. Easy to remember. Google, on the other hand, you know, 
Let's see. I'm going to do a ping. 74.125.226.84. There they are. Google. That's their real address. That's their phone number on the internet. Okay? But what do we do? We don't memorize that. That's crazy talk. We use the domain name system, even though we don't even know it. Google dot, oh, not Google, <laughs> Google dot CA. Enter, and it takes us to the exact same thing. It's the same thing. Put in the IP address, right? Because it's going through DNS if I type in Google dot CA. Boom. So what happens? Well, if you've got a slow DNS server, you're, you're, usually you're connecting through your internet service provider. They've set a default uh, DNS record. It's probably their own server. Who knows how good it is? Who knows how fast or reliable it is? It could be affecting the performance of your internet, and you don't even know because when you type in a, a website address, it has to go through DNS. Well, why does that matter, right? I go to Google, and then I do my search, and I'm finished going to Google. I go to category5.tv, and I'm done, right? Well, here's why it matters, because I'm on category5.tv, and here's, a, you know, here's an image. Well, that image is hosted on our static server. It's not an IP address. Every single image, right, is hosted on HTTP colon slash slash. It's resolving through DNS in order to get you to that image. So if you've got a slow DNS server, it doesn't just affect the load time of a page, it affects every subsequent load on the page. So what we need to do is we need to detect not only the speed of our current DNS server, it sounds advanced, but don't worry, it's not that complicated, okay? Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to get you a free tool tonight that's going to allow you to scan the speed of your server, but also uh, the speed of alternative DNS servers that you can punch into your computer, and then all of a sudden your computer is going to be running real fast on the internet. Uh, you'll be surprised at how much of a difference that it, it can make. So what I'll do is I'm going to bring up a special website that we've got here. It's just for you, cat5.tv slash DNS. Okay, that's going to take you to this domain name uh, server system benchmark from GRC. Okay, so just click on that picture, and that gives me the file. Now you'll see that I've downloaded that. I'm going to go Properties, Permissions, and I'm allowing executing as a program. This is on Linux, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set it up so that I can run this program on Linux. Remember, it's a Windows program, but I can run it on Linux no problem because I've got Wine installed, okay? So I'm going to run it in Windows uh, in Wine, okay? First thing I want to do is, now this is the same on Mac. If you've got Wine, you can install it. You can run this on Mac. There's no installation, okay? If you're on Windows, you can just run it. It's an EXE. No problem. So it works across the board, but you do need Wine if you're on Linux or Mac. You can get that by going sudo apt-get install wine in the terminal or type in wine in uh, Synaptic Package Manager or yum. Okay, so click on name servers. It's going to populate the list. See those orange ones? <clears throat> those are ones that are going to redirect if you type in a bad website address. So if I typed in Google, for example, that domain that DNS server, if I'm on it, is going to, in fact, take over that and redirect me to their error page, or it might be a, an advertising supported page. Not necessarily ideal, not necessarily what I want. I've clicked on uh, Add Remove up at the top left here. Okay, this is important. What we need to do, because out of the box, this program is going to be using um, DNS servers that are central to um, the United States, the developer uh, where they are. So what we want to do is we want to click on build a custom name server list at the bottom there. I've clicked on add remove build custom name server list. Okay. And now you'll see a button there. We click on it and it's going to take 36 minutes. Fortunately we've done this in advance. So what this is in fact doing and it, now it's done. We can see that it's finished there. Uh, but at 36 minutes is going to go through like 4,800 different DNS servers, including your own, and it's going to test them. It's going to see how fast they are in cached mode, uncached, and resolving .coms. So from that, from those 4,800, it's going to narrow it down to you know the top 100 or so, and then from there, we're going to run our benchmark tests and find out how fast we can really get your internet. So now I'm going to let this go. Uh, what I've mentioned there is that these guys here. The brown colored ones are orange. 
they are going to redirect. Now, is that a bad thing? Not necessarily. OpenDNS has that as a feature so that you can log in and you can, for example, uh, block gambling sites on your network so that if somebody tries to go to them, it will redirect. So that may be a good situation, so keep that in mind. But in some cases, you may not want that feature. Um, certainly, if you're not sure, you probably don't want it. So what we're going to do is we're going to right-click uh, on one of those or anywhere, as a matter of fact, and we're going to go remove redirecting servers. That's going to get rid of all those. So now we've got only servers that are going to just route our traffic through. Okay? So there we go. Next up, basically, uh, now these are, the, these are the ones that have been detected for me. Remember, this took 36 minutes in real time. Now I'm going to run the benchmark up at the top right-hand side there. Okay? When we run that, it's going to scan all of those, and we're going to see how fast these things really are. And you'll see that it's bumping the slower ones down to the bottom of the list and putting the faster ones right up at the top. You can see what the company names are. It's important to note, you know, Atria, for example, is a very well-respected uh, internet company, their provider of fiber optics uh, for uh, major companies, so we know that they're a reliable server, so because they're so fast, it's, it could be a good option. Now my uh, benchmark is done, and you can see the difference in speed here between the first four, for example. We only need three because we're going to have tritiary DNS records in our router or in our computer. So I can see that this top one here is running in cached mode. It's going to give me 0 0.15 seconds to re receive a website. See, that's real fast. Uncached, which means they've never indexed this site before, which is rare but possible. It's going to be a fair bit slower, but still quite fast. .com resolution means it has to go to a .com uh, DNS server. So it's basically like it's going through this DNS server and then out to another DNS server, and that performs fairly well as well. So the top one is the best performer, the next one down, and so on and so forth. So what we want to do is we want to pick which ones we want to use for our computer. So in my case, I'm going to use the top one because let's say that you know, we, we can trust this. And you can always test it and you can change it. If you find that it's not performing the way that you want, you can always change it. So no problem there. So now what I can in fact do is bring up my network configuration here. This is in Linux and go down to Edit Connections, highlight my Auto Ethernet, and the reason I'm doing that is because that's the one that I'm in fact connected to, okay? And I'm going to go Edit. On my IPv4 settings page, I want to change my method. Again, this is on Linux. I'm going to change it to Automatic DHCP Addresses Only because we want to specify the DNS ourselves. And now we can take four three, four DNS servers or whatever, and we punch in those numbers here. So if it was, you know, let's, I'm just going to make some up here just because I didn't record them there. I'm going to punch in the best one. That's my first one. Then a comma, and then the next one. Oh, with periods there. Right? And you do that for two or three, maybe four DNS records, and that's setting your computer to use those DNS servers. So these are the fast ones, right? Now back in our software from GRC, you can actually go through the tabs there and it's going to give you reports on um, what it thinks is the best option for you. Look through them. It's very informative and it is very helpful. That's going to give you a boost of up to, say, 33% on your internet speed, which is unbelievable. And it's just from doing that little setting. It's free. It's like a, if we all knew about it, then we're going to have faster internet. Um, so give that a try. Again, cat5.tv slash DNS to get the tool. Follow this tutorial and uh, you'll be able to uh, improve the speed of your system uh, on the internet. And of course, and that's based on the DNS, but in Windows you can set that up by going into your network connections, uh, go into your, uh, your settings for that connection, and change your IPv4 settings just the same way. You can even install them in your router. Uh, lots of routers will allow you to set DNS records directly in the router to override your ISP's uh, defaults. If that's the case, that's going to impact the performance on all computers in your network without having to change each one individually. Um, so that's nice. And then if you have problems, if a DNS record goes down, the, uh, the nice thing is, is you can just change which DNS you're using. You can set back to your ISP's normal ones and do a new scan or whatever. But GRC's product, which is free, is, is probably the best one out there. I've, I've compared many, including Google's product. And um, the thing is, is that it also tests the reliability 
of the server. So if you see some of the uh, areas there being covered by red, if you see some of your test, let's see if I can find one here. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get any that were red, but let me just show you. Okay, so when you get your results, okay, over here on the left, let's say the 216.254 there, it may be half covered in red. If it was half covered in red, that means it lost half of the information that was sent to it by the benchmark. So in that case, you know, you know what, I'm going to stay away from that DNS server because it's maybe fast, but it's dropping information and it's gonna, that's going to therefore actually make it slow. So check that out, cat5.tv slash DNS. Get yourself some faster internet, absolutely free. Oh, Rachel, it looks like the sun is coming up. Yay! Wow. Oh, and look. Oh, Prezies. Oh, look. At, will you look at this? There's one right here that has your name on it. Ah! And it's green wrapper. That's awesome. <laughs> so we Alrighty, have. Alrighty, what is it? If it's um, supposed to wait, it's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> green wrapper. Ah, oh, where'd my head go? Oh, it's actually what? not. What is this? Oh, it's amazing. What? If I could get out Rachel, of the box. It Hold it up to this camera here. We've got a, uh, a very special uh, pickle cam. There it is. It's an act. <laughs> <laughs> now, as I understand it, the, the pickle, pickle the pickle is a German sign of, of good luck. Uh, you put it on your tree and, uh, and somebody finds it and it gives them a year of good luck. But in actuality, as we can all imagine, it's really just to have a pickle that you can hang on your tree. So, Merry Christmas. Best gift ever. I love pickles. pickles. She likes pickles. Not a lot. gherkins. But pickles. gherkins are good. No, they're like shriveled up grandpa pickles. And there's a little something you can actually use as well. Yay! So, I could have used this on the way go. here. Oh yeah? Ten billion dollars. Ten billion micro pennies. Billion. Fantastic. I never got you anything, so Yay. Glasses. <laughs> That's pretty there cool. You go. They kind of suit. You me. look wiser already wiser how cool okay do we have any uh, quick questions in the chat room category 5.tv I'd ask you to join us in the chat room uh, yes uh, Sammy says I hey, Sammy thought says. it was something else produced by a Keebler elf <laughs> <laughs> it's a Christmas pickle <sighs> oh yes Category 5.tv, join us there. And, of course, uh, through the week, we're available uh, through that site and through our email live at Category5.tv. Head on over to our website and log in, Category5.tv, if you are a registered viewer. If you're not a registered viewer, I'm very, very sorry. Make sure you register, okay? You're not going to get in now. But get over to our website, Category5.tv, and if you're watching this after the fact, register on our site, join us in a live show, head on over to Category5.tv, because we're going to have a quick click race here. I've got a pogo plug to give you. Love to uh, give you a Christmas gift tonight, which is, it surpasses any Christmas pickle. Nothing surpasses the Christmas pickle. Well, Christmas pickle is pretty awesome. Head on over to Category5.tv. You have to be logged in in order to participate. You'll see the Click Race button on the home page, and uh, that will let you join us in Click Race. We've only got a couple of minutes left, so... What? You just, like... How do you play? You just click like crazy or what? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you, you destroy your mouse. And uh, we win a billion dollars, the winner. A pogo plug. 250 points tonight, uh, viewer points for the runner-up. So we're taking two winners... Category5.tv, click on Click Race. Make sure you're logged in. You won't see it if you're, if you're not. And if you are logged in, refresh. If you don't see it, it's right on the home page. We're going to give you a chance to win a pogo plug tonight and uh, also 250 viewer points for the runner up. Category5.tv couple more moments to uh, allow people to come on in. You want to join. What's You'll more exciting see. than clicking? 
clicking, clicking, clicking. The only thing that could be better is uh, winning. Waiting for you. <laughs> right, people? Someone's yes, going to join John. this click game. We just had thousands of people click onto our website. Poor Jot is waiting. Uh, well, there we got two people so far. Hurry on up, Jot. Come on. Get in there for click race. We got AS759, G Dog 1985. Come on. Oh. Tordo. Hey, Tordo, you can't win. <laughs> Here we go. And the click race. Tordo won last time on click race. Oh, look at this. Jot is like going mad there. Oh my. He wants that pogo plug. We've got uh, Nightstar in second place. G Dog 1985, very close behind. Tordo's clicking. Down there at the bottom. Sprint Cowboy, 16 clicks in. But uh, nowhere near the 375 that Jot's got in. Come on, Nightstar. Keep on clicking. Look at these clicks going up. You can do it, Sprint Cowboy. <laughs> Come on, Sprint Cowboy, man. You can do it. You're clicking You're like, like crazy there. That, uh, yeah. Beats the rabbit. Just, just waiting for his mouse to give up. And ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the click race, keep going, keep going. The winner of a poker plug tonight is Jones. And our runner-up who wins uh, 250 viewer points tonight is Nightstar. I thought you were going to say dollars, and I was going to say, why wasn't I in the click competition? Why wasn't I? Just I like a pogo plug. Two pogo plugs. A pogo plug. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Uh, all you have to do is email me a uh, an email. That would be the best thing to email me. Live at Category5.tv. What I need from you is your real name, your full mailing address, and your phone number so that we can give that to the courier. We're going to send those out. Uh, we had 575 clicks there from Jot, and uh, Nightstar gave us 472 clicks. So it was, uh, it was pretty close. Only off by 103. Very Only. good stuff. Only. Only. 103. That's like... Uh, there, there's a couple of you that were down around that many. He's been doing his finger exercises. Yes. Probably. Do, 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 do. We're talking about rapid fire mice. That would be cool when it comes to that. We are going to be giving away one more pogo plug uh, next week, uh, just in time for Christmas. So make sure you're watching the show. Make sure you register on our website because, once again, you cannot participate in the, uh, in the contest unless you have registered on our website, category5.tv. It's free. Absolutely free. Uh, just allows you to become uh, more involved in our community, uh, and uh, certainly we'll we'll love having you here. So, if you're new, pop us an email too. It's always nice to hear from new people. Or send a postcard. Yeah, that's a great idea. We're we're lacking Christmas in the postcard, postcard. department. Come I'd on. love to. Yeah, I mean, is the India. snow? India. Who was it? Who's in India? Send a postcard. Yeah, come on. Who was that? It? Was. Uh, Lun uh, Lun no. Lunatic something. Lunatic head? Was Sorry, that? Lunatic head? Yeah. It wasn't a, a normal name that I would name my child, so it's it's difficult to remember. <laughs> Jot says that the reason that he's so good at clicking on the mouse is from Planet Calypso deathmatch battles <laughs> in peer to peer. So if you want to, you know, have a, you don't want to have Jot on an opposing team, but definitely if you want to get on his team, it's cap5.tv slash Calypso. You can download it. Cool. You have fun this week? Yep, I managed to get through without a coughing fit. I was That's worried. That's good. That's how I was like this. Very good. Don't yeah. cough. Don't make me laugh. Why is Santa trying to make me laugh? <laughs> With uh, that horrendous photo. I think that was from last Christmas. Something like that. I don't know. Something ridiculous. We pulled it out of the tickle trunk. Yeah. <laughs> Hope everybody had fun. Nice to see you, Sammy says. Agamotto. Uh, we've got, uh, there is Lunatic Head. Uh, Bill MNFL, Chris Reich, good day. Uh, Dennis Kelly, my man, checked out the videos. Uh, awesome job, man. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd love to chat with you very soon. D Hand, Drumstick, Evermind, 
in alphabetical order. Let's change things up a little bit. Sprint Cowboy. Uh, we got Tordo, of course. Trekkie Double O. Yeah. Simon Sees. R.D. Blair. R.F. Bomb. Good to see ya. Nua. Nightstar. We even have Rachel Shu in the chat room. That's Yay. how classy our chat room is. Yay! Have a great week, everybody. I'll see you next Tuesday night. Krista's going to be here for uh, another Christmas special, and we've got another Pogo plug to give away. We're going to be having a lot of fun, and uh, we've got a lot of great information for you. Get your questions in live at Category5.tv. Alrighty. Merry Christmas, everyone. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. We won't see you until, uh, until after. So the new year. Good to have you here. Nice, uh, as always. And I hope you have a fantastic week, and you too. Mm-hmm. See you, everybody. Bye. Good night. <laughs> oh, my hands are gone. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs>